What's up guys? Learning with Rich here. In this video, it's another tip and tricks from Learning with Rich. So this time around, I'm going to quickly show you some basic knowledge about the Revit.ini. Okay, so first up, you can locate the Revit.ini file in this uh, path. Okay, so you can go to the PC, Drive C, and then you go to the users, and then your username, and then you go to the app data, roaming, Autodesk, Revit, Autodesk Revit 2020. And then this is the Revit INI that I am talking about. So as you can see, if I'm going to adjust this one, it says here that the Revit that INI is a configuration settings. Now, there are some instances that you can't find the app data because as you can see by default here, you notice that the folder here is a bit uh, half tone. Okay, so by default, app data folder is hidden. Okay, so if you want to show your app data folder, so all you have to do is to go to the view tab. And then after that, you go to the options. And then you look for the change folder and search options. Just select that one. And then from the folder options, you can go to the view. And then you look for hidden files and folders. So by default, the don't show hidden files radio button is selected here. That's why if I select your OK, notice that the app data here is now hidden. So that is the default settings of the app data. Now, if you want to show that, so you just need to go to the view, options, uh, change folder and search options, and then you go to the view, and then just click that radio button, and then you're good to go. Just select OK, and then you can now see the app data. So when you double click that one, you just need to go to, uh, or is that uh, roaming, Autodesk, Revit, Autodesk Revit 2020, and then there's your Revit.ini. Okay, if you're going to press F1, you will be going to the Autodesk Revit 2020 help. Okay, I already did that. So just to show you, so this is the Revit.ini file. So the definition is, the Revit.ini file contains settings that define variables, paths, recent files, and other settings for the software. So modify settings to customize the software to suit your needs. So for a list of documented Revit.ini settings, so you can download this spreadsheet. Okay, so basically, if I'm going to open my Revit.ini, so I'll just go back again to that folder, and then I'll just double-click this. So it's a notepad. Okay, so this is the settings the configuration settings of your uh, Revit. As you can see, it's the Revit.ini, and then you can see here some settings that is already set up, like for example, the background color, so that's the settings of the background color, the highlight color, and then the pre-highlight color, okay? So any changes that you made here, like for example, if I'm going to change the file options, and then I'll go to the graphics, so I have here the selection, the color is red, the pre-selection is green. So the settings there is recorded here in the .ini, Revit.ini, which is uh, this one. So just remember this one. I'm just going to give you a quick, exa uh, quick example. So the highlight color here is 255. And then the pre-highlight, so probably I'll just snip this one just to quickly show you what will happen. So I'm going to snip this. Okay, I'll just do another one. Okay, so this is the settings of my uh, highlight color and pre-highlight color. So take a look. I'm going to close this one, the Revit.ini. And then here on my Revit, I'm going to change that. So I go to the file options, and then I go to the graphics. And then I'll just change here the selection. So instead of red, so let's say I'm going to make it yellow. Okay. And then for the pre-selection, instead of green, I'll just make it uh, cyan. Okay. And then I select here, okay. All right. So as you can see, it's now cyan. When I click, it becomes yellow, right? So pre-selection is cyan. 
selection is yellow. So if I go back again to my uh, Revit.ini, so I'll double click this one. So notice that the background here will now change. So you can see that the highlight color now becomes 65535. So that color is uh, depends on the settings of it is already programmed that the settings for the highlight color is this color, the one that I have chosen, and then the pre-highlight uh, pre -highlight color is now that color, which is different from the original ones that I have. So basically, any settings that you change in your Revit program, it will affect your Revit.ini because uh, Revit.ini, like what I have said earlier, if we go back again here, this file contains settings that define variables, paths, recent files, and other settings for the software. So modify settings to customize the software to suit your needs. Okay, so I'm showing you this so that at least you have another way of setting up your project, or at least you have an idea what is this Revit.ini file that they are talking about. So now I'm going to close this one, and then I'll just change back again the settings. So this is the settings that I want for the graphics. I want the selection to be red and then for the pre-selection to be green. So that's the settings that I want. There you go. Okay, so another thing that I would like to show you here in uh, Revit.ini is this one here. Let me just close that Facebook. Okay, so I'm going to move this down. So just to quickly show you, there is this do not show me. Okay, so the acronym is DNSM settings in Revit.ini. So the definition here is this one. Okay, in the Revit.ini file, settings in the DNSM or do not show me section record your preferences for seeing various recurring task dialogues in the software okay just like for this one okay let me just minimize this again and let me show you the revit.ini so currently in this revit.ini file i do not have here Oh, notice again that the highlight color already changed to my preference, uh, preferred color. Okay, so as you can see here, if I'm going to Control F and then search for DNSM, that stands for Do Not Show Me, and then I enter. So notice that there is no DNSM uh, settings yet because I haven't, I haven't done it yet. So that is what I'm going to show you. So let me just close this one and then close again my D, my Revit.ini. So what I'm going to do is, here, this is just a simple uh, model. So it's just a floor. Uh, it's just a wall that contains walls. So it looks like this. There you go. So it's just like this one. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open the level 2 here. And then let's say I'm going to create here a floor. Also, I want you to notice that the floor here, oh, I mean this wall here, the outer walls, it is highlighted, right? So that it's because this wall is created higher than the level 2. So compared to our underlay here, okay, so it is uh, created only until level 2. So it does not pass the level 2, okay? So there, that's the reason why, in case you're wondering why is it this one is highlighted, it's because it passed the level 2. And then these walls here, it's only until level 2. So if I select that properties, so it's only up to level 2. Okay, but this walls here, so it's unconnected, so the height is 5,000, so it's uh, it passed the level 2. Now, for this one, I'm going to create a floor. Just quickly create a floor. And then I'll just use the peak walls and then press tab, click. So that's the boundary. So if I'm going to select the check here to finish that. Okay, so there is this dialog box that will pop up. Okay, so we are all familiar with this. That it tells us, uh, would you like walls that go up to this floor's level to attach to its bottom? Okay, so previously in lower version, previous releases of Revit, you do not have this option. 
Okay, you don't have this option. Do not show me this message again. Okay, do not show me this message again. What you have before in Revit 2019 or uh, Revit 2020, because this feature only appears in Revit 2020.1. So now I already have 2020.2. But if your version is Revit 2020 and below, you will not be having this option. Do not show me this message again. So you will only see this uh, question and then attach and then don't attach. You don't have this option. But in Revit 2020 above, so you now have this option. So you have now the option to just check this. If you do not want to show this dialog again, and then use the same settings or the preferred settings that you want. Like for example, I select attach here. So every time I create a floor, it will always do the same settings or my preferred one that is attached. And it will not show this dialog box. Okay, so do not show me. So I just checked that. I don't want to show this on my for my uh, next creation of floor. I do not want to show this dialog box. So I check that and then this is my preferred settings. So I select attach. There you go. Okay, so for this one, it's just so happened that Autodesk didn't put that particular uh, option there. Okay, so that's why every time you create and then there's an overla over overlap with highlighted walls, it will always show this because there is no option here. Okay, but the other one, the first one, it will not show again. So for this, I'll just select yes. There you go. Okay, so same with creation of your roof. So if I go to the roof, that's the roof. So if I'm going to create a roof here, roof, and then like an overhang of 500. So I'll just tap, click, and then check this one. Again, there is this dialog box that will appear and you have an option here. Do not show me this message again. So I'm going to check that one. I do not want to show this. Again, this is a new feature for 2020.1. This DNSM option here. So I'll just attach it. So that's my preferred setting. So I'll just select attach. And there you have it. So the next time I create a floor, like for example, this floor. So I'm going to delete this one. So just to quickly show you, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete this roof. Okay, so I'm going back to level two. So you see when I create a floor here, uh, tab click and then I check right so notice that the first dialog box didn't appear anymore except for this one because like what I have said earlier there is no option here for us to turn off this one all right so I'll just select yes now if I go to roof okay and then create a roof here uh, tab click and then I check again notice that it will not show you the dialog box again. Now, if we go to the INI file, okay, which is this one, it's already updated. So every time you do something in your Revit project, your that, uh, your Revit that INI will be updated. So I'm gonna open this one, and then this time around, I'm gonna look for DNSM, okay, and then I select your find next, and there you go. So I now have a DNSM here. So I have the task here, task dialog wall attached to floor. So the value is 1001. And then you also have task dialog wall attached to roof. So the value is 1001. So you might be wondering what is this 1001 stands for. So you might, ex uh, you might expecting like a value of 1 or 0 like that. But this time, what is this 1001? Now, I'm going to show you again the help here from Revit for the do not show me, just to quickly show you. So do not show me DNSM settings in Revit.ini. So these are the values here. Okay, so number one, the task dialog will not display again. And zero, the task dialog will display as necessary. 
and then this is the one one zero zero one task dialog will not display again and use affirmative default response or one zero zero two task dialog will not display again and use a negative default resp uh, default response so what we did a while ago is we selected uh, attach so that's an affirmative and we do not want to display again that's why the default value becomes one zero zero one so just in case you want to return back that display message again so all you have to do is to change the value of your dnsm to zero which is what i'm going to show you next Okay, so the current value here is 1001. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it 0. I'm going to make that 0 because I want to show back again the dialog box. So then Control S to save it or just go to the file and then save. Just like that. And then close that one. Okay, and then let's go back to Revit. Just to quickly show you, I'm going to delete the roof. I'm going to delete the floor that I have here, which is which is this one. Okay, and then let's create the floor. Floor. Okay, tap, click, finish. And as you can see, it now appears again. All right, so would you like? So I'm going to attach that. This is affirmative, so that is 1001. Now, if I'm going to check this one, I do not want to show this, and I select don't attach, so that's a negative, right? So we are expecting 1002 value. So I'm going to select this, don't attach. Yes. And then I'll create a roof. Create a roof, roof. Click. Finish. Okay, check this one. All right, so I select here attach. So that's an uh, that's an affirmative. So that will gonna be one zero zero one value. So I select attach, and there you go. So if I go back again to my Revit.ini, double click, it's all the way down here, and there you go. Okay. So you now have that DNSM one zero zero two and one zero zero one. Okay, so basically that's uh, something that you need to know when it comes to Revit.ini and also the DNSM, which is Do Not Show Me Feature in Revit, Revit 2020.20.1. Okay, so that's it for this one. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you guys. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, you can put it on the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.